Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas and every single weekday I host a bunch of live calls with creators from all around the world, different stages of their career, whether it be junior or senior or head designers, developers. And we always talk about different tools that help us because right now with AI, as you can see there, the tool space is exploding every single day. You know, you can go into something like Product Hunt and you'll see that there is a bunch of different products being released on a daily basis. And not only that, but now we have this Vibe Coder community where you have tools like Lovable or Bolt where you can basically, with a prompt, create some type of app and eventually own that code and have a new type of SaaS business or some type of startup. So in this huge saturation of different products that are being released, today I want to focus on my favorite products, my favorite software products that you should use as a senior UX designer. And actually a great place to actually start and kind of brainstorm on different tools is this website called Toolfolio. As you can see, Toolfolio is a huge marketplace of different tools. You have different tools in, in regards to just design or or um, AI or no code, uh, different startups as well. And if you go to design, for example, you have colors, typography, icons, inspiration, UI, UX, mockups, utility and software, 3D and motion. So there are a bunch of tools for you to check out. And all of these tools have been like curated to be in, in this marketplace. So even though, yes, there are a bunch of tools out there, you can go ahead and do your own research inside of Toolfolio. And the first tool that I want to present to you guys today is, is a tool called Flow Map, and it's basically a visual platform for planning UX and pitching web design. And what does that mean? Well, it's a great place to actually start off and create a site sitemap. It has like a very similar flow to something like Miro, where you have like this interactive canvas, and then you can turn your sitemaps into wireframes looking like this. And of course, it's adaptable with, with tools like Figma, so you can export this and bring it into your Figma project. But apart from sitemaps and wireframes, it can also help you create, you know, project estimates or project briefs for certain clients. And once you log in, it's going to kind of look like this, where you have, you know, a demo sitemap and a demo user flow. So I can go ahead and look at the sitemap. As you can see, we have the sitemap looking like this. We can switch to different types of views. We can collapse the pages so we just can see all of the pages. As you can see, we also have different labels for each page signifying like, you know, this page has been done. This page is still in progress. This page needs attention because there's some type of, you know, issue going on in a certain section on how it should look like. And for the user flow, you can see that the interface has quite, you know, changed a little bit. So you have a specific name here and then you have different flows. As a profile page, you can go either to this one, add a picture or take a picture and then, you know, upload a picture, then success, you know, preview picture, confirm, home page, and then you can even import pages from your sitemap. As you can see, I already have that other sitemap that I showed you before, and you can just bring in other pages from your sitemap and then place them here and connect them easily. So it has like a very similar type of feel or look and feel as something like Miro or FigGem has, but the interface is just purely for making user flows. And then what I was talking about earlier, you can make these estimations for, for potential clients like Let's say you have this whole, you know, uh, sitemap of different pages that you want to create for a specific website that you're going to build in Framer or something like that. And then up here you have this estimation button. So you can click on that and then you can see, you can basically like set a specific rate for different tasks, like for design, for development, for Q&A, for content management, and it can help you set a budget for that client project. And you can set like additional costs, like a UI kit it doesn't have to be a thousand bucks. It can be like, you know, a hundred, 120 bucks for like some type of framer UI kit, domain purchase, a specific uh, yearly subscription for Webflow here. You can add all of these additional costs and this tool will basically help you create an estimation so that you, you and the client are both kind of aligned on the actual budget of the project. Now, the next tool that I wanna to present to you guys is a tool called Raycast and it's a perfect tool when it comes to file management inside of your computer. And right now this is only available for MacBooks. It's, you know, you can join the Windows waitlist over here, but basically it helps you with a bunch of shortcuts that, you know, save you a bunch of time, right? So you have like your clipboard history, what you've copied and pasted in the, you know, before. Sometimes you copy something else by mistake and then you're like, oh shoot, I have to find the thing that I copied before. You have a clipboard history. It has an AI feature, which basically can help you like, you know, brainstorming about different apps that you have in your system. It can also help you with like window management. Let's say that you have some type of big display. It helps you, you know, 
organize your different displays. But actually something that I really love about this is that is the actions, right? You can cl click on command K and you can do a bunch of actions. So for example, I can click on open command over here and then we have a bunch of different extensions for, for Raycast. So for example, if you work with Slack, right? You can click over here in Slack and we can install this. And then once it's installed, we have open commands. And then basically it can help you, you know, with certain shortcuts that you do on a repetitive basis inside of Slack. Let's say that I have some type of feature request that I want to, you know, forward into a Slack channel as a very high priority feature request. Not only do you have these external extensions, you are, you also have like internal extensions in, inside of Raycast. And they're just very, you know, helpful things, right? Like you can ask the browser something. So it's like an AI type of feature, right? You can summarize a specific article from a specific tab, for example. You can ask your finder something. Let's say you, you're looking for a file, you can't really find it. It's an MP4, you know, um, it, it's a video where the title might be something about like a profile picture. I don't know. You can ask finder about that. You can even create your own extensions inside of Raycast for different types of repetitive tasks that you might have. Um, so, I mean, honestly, Raycast has a bunch of stuff. It's just very useful when it comes to, you know, organization inside of your computer. So I can do a whole video about that. If you want me to do that, please let me know down in the comments below, but that's, that's Raycast. Another tool that I stumbled upon is called Maze, and it basically helps you automate user research. So in their website, it says run 100 interviews at 3 a.m. in Tokyo while you sleep. Your global user users finally get to join the conversation, gather insights in real time, no matter the time zone. So so this is kind of like their, their biggest specialty and why I want to present it in this video. And the interface looks like this, where you have a home view. And basically, I'm just getting started. So you get something like this. But here you have like a like a demo project, which you can find over here on the left. And if you click on this and click on this, you're going to kind of see the structure of how the test um, would eventually be orchestrated, right? So we have this introduction, we have these different questions as a screening, right? You have, have you booked a trip in the la in the past six months? Have you used this, um, this app before? You can, you know, show specific images. And then over here on the right side, as you can see, we have the preview of how it would look like. And over here, you these are like all different types of of like examples of different questions that you can add. And over here you have like these interactive questions. So you can add a picture of your, your interface and then ask the user to do a specific task. Like where would you click first to apply a filter? So the user would, you know, this specific test would track the user's mouse movement and give you like a heat map, for example. And they have a very generous pricing plan, like just for 30 days, you can do three different tests. And then after that, it's like one study a month, five different seats, and you can buy credits as you go. As you can see, these are like the different prices, uh, prices for the different credits. And so each panel response has a credit value, which varies depending on the study type and the targeting criteria. So this is definitely a tool to try out, especially for larger teams that, you know, if you're like, for example, part of an agency that works on works with bigger companies, and they have a budget to do these types of things. You can def definitely leverage AI to help you create create these different user tests. And as it says, you can be in Tokyo sleeping and run like a 100 uh, different types of user tests while you sleep. Now, another tool that I want to share is a tool called Granola, and it's an AI notepad for people in back-to-back -back meetings. I'm pretty sure most of you know about uh, fireflies.ai or there's one called otter ai and these are also great as you can see you can scroll through the fireflies website and they have a bunch of great features but the thing that i'm kind of annoyed about with this specific tool is that it's a bit too much there's a lot of things happening there's a lot of things that you could do and i'm not really a big fan of generalist tools i'm a big fan of like tools that are very specialist in one thing so that you have a very clean ui you know at the end of the day we're designers we like good design and granola provides that right you basically have uh, someone an ai that joins your meetings and it provides you with a very simple interface and it doesn't just give you a transcript of your meeting notes but it can also transform your meeting notes into other types of templates like customer discovery, one-on-one, -on -one, stand-up, pitch, user interviews. You can also create your own template so that it understands what type of meeting it is and then generate a transcript based on that understanding it has of that specific meeting. And like I said, the, the interface is very simple. You get this looking like 
like a notion type of doc um, with the information that, that Granola wrote down. And then you can just ask it a few things, right? You can ask it, um, you know, continue chatting with those notes or write up write a specific email based on those notes. And it's simple because it's made for people that have back to back meetings all day long, and they don't really want to deal with all of these tools, like a tool like Fireflies would have. So this specific use case is for people that have back to back meetings, want to keep everything clean, but don't want to have that huge variety of different features from a specific tool. They just want to have that simplicity. Anyways, going on to the next tool, which is more for prototyping, we have magicpath.ai. And magicpath is a stunning AI prototyping tool because you can start off in different ways, right? You can go up here, you can create your own theme and create designs based on this theme. So for example, I have like this Discord theme that looks like this, and you can kind of preview it looking like this. You have like a like a Hulk theme that I created before that's that looks more like like this. So you can create like a bunch of different types of custom themes that you know that you'd like or that have to do with your your clients um, whole visual guide. And then let's say we for example like this this discord one and we for example like the dark mode. So right now it gives us a few images of components that we can create for example like this chat component or this login component up here and what I can do is I can just double click anywhere. And I can select a theme. Let's select this Discord theme. And let's say, let's create, let's say that we're, you know, you're trying to rebuild a flow of a specific um, part of your website. Let's say that you want to make like a, let's say that you want to make like a cancellation screen, right? So let's say, let's create a cancellation, cancellation screen for a, let's say for a mobile app that like we create a cancellation screen for a mobile app that allows users to select to cancel their subscription or stay and get offered 50% off for the next month, right? We want to we kind of test that flow and we can go like this. We can say like dark mode and then what we can do is click on submit and alternatively, we can go ahead and copy this and move over here on the right side. This is like the great part that it's also an interactive canvas. You can submit this and let's say that you want to draw like you actually want to draw it out like in a piece of paper, how it would look like. So you can have something like this. And then this is like, like an image, for example. And let's say that we're not building a, you know, mobile app. It's more for like a desktop app. So we can draw out like the main structure, like looking like this. And then for example, this would be like a paragraph over here. Boom, boom. And then we can do like two buttons and the button can have some type of background looking like this. Right. And then this one can be like a white background and these can we'll just give it like a gray color. So you can like kind of like do things like this and give it to magic path. So we can take a screenshot and then we can go ahead give it to magic path and then we can drag and drop that screenshot into the chat and we can just for a web app, right? Click on submit. And while that, gets generated, gets generated. We can go ahead and view this mobile app. We'd hate to see you go before you cancel. We have a special offer just for you. So stay and save 50% off or cancel subscription. So you can, you know, choose one of these. And as you can see, this is not a static design. It's an interactive design, which is the beauty of magic path is that it's not just vectors and, and, you know, shapes and texts and all of that. It's actual real code. So we can, for example, go cancel, cancel subscription and confirm cancellation if we wanted to, or stay and save 50% off. And as you can see, it's all in this kind of discord design style. So that's why it's important to use this theme. And for example, if you wanted to change certain designs and say that we wanted to align this in a different way, we can go ahead and get this and change the flex to a different position and kind of do the same thing over here, right? We can kind of see the different options that we have. I, for example, like this more so we can click on save and then we can just add text to this wireframe so that it kind of understands it a little bit better. I think it's better than just giving it shapes and we can go ahead and say, and then we can say, use this wireframe as a reference as to how the structure should, should, should look like. So let's submit that. And while this generates, another cool thing is that we can go here and edit this component and you can preview this component in different styles. So let's say that you want to reuse this type of flow, but for a different client, you can test that out over here and you see all these different black uh, dark modes that it creates. This is like the, the magic path style, as you can see. And 
you have all of these different styles, different topographies, and so on and so forth, just to kind of preview how that looks like. And as you can see, we get the exact same structure that we asked for based on our little sketch over here. So you can sketch out different things in paper or in Excala draw or in something like that in Miro, and then bring it into Magic Path and get your designs living like this. This is actual real code. So if I click here, you know, you see that the cancellation process is happening and then you can eventually add like a different page and so on and so forth. And again, all of these different tools were found in Toolfolio. So Toolfolio is a great source of information when you're, you know, if you're interested in learning about all of these great softwares that are coming out and that can be totally helpful for your workflow. I just presented a handful of them, but it's your job to kind of go here and look through all of your, all of these different tools. They even have a, you know, email newsletter that you can, you know, be updated on a weekly basis, I believe, on different creators and different softwares that are coming out. And honestly, now, since AI is moving so fast and so many things are, you know, kind of being done with AI, you can, like I just saw, showed you with Magic Path, design with AI, you can develop with AI. It's very important for us to stay up to date to these different tools, use them, know how to use them, master them, and apply them to our actual workflow. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it from my side. If you have any questions regarding any of the tools today, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you want me to do a deep dive into one of these, please let me know as well. I'd be more than happy to, to go deep into one of these tools. And um, yeah, um, hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.